Hey everyone, it's Ron Johnson, and this is the Ron Johnson Show on Locked On Sports Minnesota. We have to talk about the NBA All-Star Game. The NBA All-Star Game is not what it used to be. There was one trend that a lot of the current players weren't happy with the older players. What was that? And also, there was a player that was snubbed, but he was the best player considered in the All-Star Game. We'll talk about that next on the Ron Johnson Show. Locked On Sports Minnesota Podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. Now the Ron Johnson Show. On the field, in the broadcast booth, Ron Johnson is Minnesota sports. He's played with them, hung out with them, and grown up with all the big names in Minnesota sports. They're hanging out with Ron Johnson. It's the Ron Johnson Show on the Locked On Sports Minnesota podcast. And it starts now. Hey everyone, it's the Ron Johnson Show, and we are going to talk about this NBA All-Star Game. Does it need to change? Are the veterans correct about the old school players of the 90s, or the 90s players correct? Is the NBA going to have to adjust it at some point? But before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, powered by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Just visit FanDuel.com backslash Locked On. To make every moment more. That's fanduel.com backslash locked on to make every moment more. And as this basketball season heats up, you're going to want these parlays. And I'm pretty sure there's some if your team makes the playoffs parlay bets you can make or some prop bets. So that makes it so much more fun. I mean, think about all the fun we're having looking at the XFL by drafting a couple XFL teams. Imagine if you put money on the line every single night, not wins or losses, just parlays. I mean, you could bet the wins and losses, but the parlays make every moment more. Uh, we have Ernie Wilwright and his brother, Rob Wilwright. One was a Badger, one was a Gopher. So we're going to sit down and hang around Ron Johnson segment and talk to them, play a little daily three with them as well. Uh, tons of conversation of roll the boat versus, well, I don't even know what the Badgers do. Do they, I don't know, build a dam? Who knows? <laughs> but when you, when you look at the Gophers, uh, Badgers relationship, Rob Wilwright actually says something pretty cool when he talks about, he kind of wish he had been a gopher when you think about the number of passes because he played with some great running backs. I mean, when he lists off these running backs that came out of Wisconsin, he played with, I see why he didn't get as many passes. But if he had been a gopher at that time, you look at that offense at that time, Rob Wilwright would have been a 60, 70 catch receiver probably a season in that span uh, in 13 to 16 because, I mean, it was, it was a wide open offense at that point. But, Sam, we got to talk about this NBA All-Star game, and you give me your thoughts on this. Yeah. Yeah, the NBA All Star Game to me, it, it was boring. It was boring, and I do agree with everybody saying it was a glorified layup line. Uh, I felt like they were just warming up the whole time. Every once in a while, there's a block, and then the one time LeBron uh, blocks, I think he brought block Shea uh, and got the block. Then the next time, he tried to get a block and almost broke his finger off into the rim. Um, so one that scares other players now, like, oh man, if I play too hard and I'm not playing for real, am I risking getting hurt? Because that's not an angle you would take in a regular game to block a ball but because you know the players moving slower uh you got time to decipher and jump and you're way up under the basket so there's no like you know violation there's no defensive zone calls like you could just do whatever you want and that's when guys get hurt and so they somebody played a video of the kobe bryant versus lebron james and i think michael jordan said he thought lebron james was like the best player in the nba uh and kobe took it personal kobe went out there and he locked lebron down for about four to five plays straight. There's a, there's a string of it online right now showing Kobe locking LeBron down. One, I forgot how good Kobe was on defense. I mean, even though LeBron wasn't trying super hard, uh, he was on him. And so when you think about the All-Star game, one, let's pay off the tees with the with the uh, the, the way they do the draft, the voting and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And Edwards. Timberwolves and Edwards was snubbed, wasn't picked. Then he gets in as an alternate, and he's the first player taken by LeBron. Clearly, if you're the first player taken, you should be an alternate. I mean, you shouldn't have been an alternate. You should have been a, an, an all-star player. You, mm-hmm. your, your resume has shown it. Your uh, acting prowess for Hollywood has shown that you deserve to be a star. And he didn't get in. So, And, and he becomes the best player, but he does make some comments. We'll talk about that in a minute. But Sam, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, going from all-star snub 
to all-star number one pick. Yeah, much deserved. And then the, getting the validation of being picked by LeBron, that's huge. On a big stage, apparently they have the same agent, so there's kind of a connection there. But LeBron recognizes oh, okay. game. I think he has an eye for talent. He gets it. Uh, so when LeBron picks Ann Edwards, that means something. That that puts Ann Edwards in the spotlight. Uh, he's one of the most electrifying young players in the game. It's a shame he wasn't in initially. Um, but it, it's a big deal. It's cool. And it was one of the only cool parts of the weekend. I mean, I, I didn't see a lot of it, um, but I did see this, Ron. The over-under on FanDuel for that game was 324, yep. right? So it's that that's already insane. <laughs> and it ended up at 359 point-wise. They were 35 points wow. over the over-under. That's how little defense was being played. That's how easy it was to score in that game. That's crazy. And, and so when you think about that, not just the All-Star game, because there was a, a, a question, it was a fun question asked of the, of the players in the All-Star game, and it says, if there's one thing you get sick of hearing from older players from the older generation, what is it? And they all said the game is soft. They're sick of hearing the game is soft because they don't feel like it. Now, some of them did admit, I wish I could hand check. I wish I could be a little bit more physical. Uh, but then I think Zion said, dude, I get fouled all the time and the refs don't call it. So I don't know what people are saying that it's not physical. Um, then there was players, I think it was Drew Holiday, uh, said that he, or, or his brother, one of the, I think it was Drew Holiday said that, um, in, in a lot of people tell him he'd be able to play in that era because he's so tough and physical. Um, you think about Dame Lillard. Nobody can stop that three point. I don't care how physical you are. You can't stop him from shooting as far out as he shoots. Steph Curry, you can't stop him from shooting as far out. The game has evolved from a shooter standpoint. When you look at the number of threes Michael Jordan made and how when he made three in a row, you know, the most iconic, you know, move ever was ha happened against the Trailblazers. That's because Jordan didn't expect to make three threes in a row. Steph Curry makes three threes in a row and is like, all right, it's just part of the game. Like, this is just what I do. Um, and, and so that's the difference in the game. Now, was it more physical? Yeah, but I think the big difference, there's no fist being thrown. One, these guys are, are a little bit more friendly to each other because of social media. They know each other. They they played AAU together, which didn't happen in the 90s. Uh, these guys have had contact with each other uh, through cell phones, which wasn't a thing in the 80s. <laughs> um, so, you know, they take trips together. They, go, they, they can all know who's going to be in Cancun at the same time. I mean, there's a lot of things uh, that has changed some of the, like, I'm, I want to beat this guy up when I see him this week compared to like now it's like, okay, I know these dudes. Let's go out here and play some good basketball. Now, some of the scores are a little too high. Uh, I think that's part of it. But at the end of the day, I think they're, they are going to relook at because what's happening in the NFL, again, the NFL, they're saying it's getting too soft. But the NFL has done it for a reason. It's getting too soft. Um, it, it, they are saying guys are getting concussions, killed. You know, uh, what's his name? Calvin Johnson. Uh, Megatron just said, hey, let's look at uh, herbal elixirs to help the players. Not so much take the physicality out of the game, but let's let them medicate uh, the right way and not with Oxycontin and all this other stuff. So there's a, there's a lot to that where football's figured out, basketball's trying to figure it out. Here's the other statement. Anthony Edwards, before we get out of here, we get to Ernie Will Wright and the Hanger Ron Johnson segment. Ernie Will, or um, Anthony Edwards said, I, I don't know about low management for you guys. I'm going to play. He's like, these people show up to see me play. They pay for me to play. Uh, it's only what do you say? It's only 82 games. This this game is not guaranteed uh, to last forever. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna give the fans what they want. A lot of NBA players like low management. A lot of people are starting to tweet about like, man, I, I paid all this money to come see LeBron play. He didn't play. I paid all this money. I think that one kid who actually now we realize is a little bit of a because he's had that sign at every stadium now. It says I showed up whatever, 6,412 6, miles to see Luca play and Luca's not going to play today, right? You know, then he did it to Kyrie and then he did it, to, you know, it, I think the kid's just a scam artist. But you do have those true stories of people flying miles and miles and miles, paying a lot of money to see their favorite player play and that player decides to rest. Now, Luca, I, I don't know if it was Luca. Oh, no, Jimmy Butler was the one. Uh, he just was hurt. Like, he wasn't, well, allegedly he was hurt. Um so I think that's part of it, too. Anthony Edwards is like, look, I'm not – if I can go, I can go. I'm going. And I think that's a different mindset. Anthony Edwards, you know, that's – I've said that. He reminds me of a guy like Michael Jordan who just wants to go out every night or Kobe Bryant who just wants to go out every night and play. So do you think that – I don't know if it's going to have backlash or do you think some players maybe took that a little personal? Like, dude, why are you, why are you calling us out for, for resting? 
Yeah, I don't think it'll have backlash. Um, I I think that people respect Anthony Edwards for speaking his mind. Um, and I think that mm-hmm. that comment got so much positive feedback. I, I don't think he's gonna I don't think there's gonna be players that begrudge him for it. I guess I don't know for sure, but that to me is one of the problems with sort of this dial back in physicality is guys taking games off. I'm all for minutes management. If you want to dial a guy back and only play him 20 minutes a game compared to 40, I think that's more acceptable. But I I think that in this game that is more based around skill and not as much about punishment, you're not getting, you know, hit over the head when you go to the basket anymore. It is a little bit easier to get through a game without, without the nicks and bruises. Because of that, you shouldn't have guys taking days off when fans are paying top dollar, especially when it's the Warriors who come in and they charge these elite prices. Yeah, I, I get where Anthony Edwards is coming from. I don't think there will be any blowback on it. Well, we'll see. We'll see if any players take it personal. I mean, we know some players do. They secretly take it personal. So we'll see how Anthony Edwards is treated on some of these road trips, <laughs> uh, whether he's elbowed a couple of times, whether he's hard fouled. And, hey, hey, young guy, you're still – it's only your second, third year. I think it's, what, third year, second year, something like that? Like Third year. You're, you're still new to this game, young fella. You're, you're still new to this game. Like, we're, we're 10-year vets. Chill out. Let us do what we got to do to get our bodies through. You, you're you're early in your career. When you're 22, you know, going out and dunking every night, that's great. When you're 32, it hurts a little bit more. It takes a little bit more time to come back from those. I mean, I, I'm, I'm 42. And, then, and when I play basketball, I'm done for about uh, two weeks. I mean, I hurt my hamstring <laughs> the other day. And I haven't been able to play. I mean, I've been in Mexico, so that's different. But, you know, it, it's it's rest to recover for me. That's This is my low management for basketball, being in Mexico. Because my hamstring is sore and I had to get away. Uh, Sam, I hope you're dealing with the snowstorm. Uh, I pray that everybody is safe out there. Stay home. Like they're, they're canceling schools, just stay home, people. Enjoy, enjoy your family. Uh, but we got Ernie Wilwright, Rob Wilwright coming up next in the Hanging Around Johnson segment. But I want you guys to know you can download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app on Amazon Fire and Roku. Just go to your Amazon Fire or Roku device, search Locked On Sports Minnesota. You can download all of our videos, all of our shows. The app will be right there on your TV. And we have a word from our sponsors. Today's show brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of Locked On. NFL is done, but XFL is here. You can find the lines on that. You can also find lines on the NBA now that the All-Star break is over and Edwards and the Wolves back in action on Friday. Uh, You can download the app, safe, secure, super easy to use. You can find the lines for uh, point spread, money line, over under you can put together a same game parlay with players points rebounds assists all jumbled together and have a lot of fun with it and you get your winnings inst- instantly after you cash that parlay so don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet at fanduel.com slash locked on get up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if the first bet doesn't win that's the no sweat first bet at fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more well, now it's time to hang with Ron Johnson. And hanging with Ron Johnson segment today, uh, I, I had to do a special one. Uh, you know, Super Bowl is done. You know, season is well on its way into the offseason. We're looking at trades and 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 the defensive coordinators getting his defense set. But we got to talk a little college football. I got Ernie Wilwright and Rob Wilwright. Now, this is the, the brother duo. Uh, for those that remember, Ernie Wilwright played for the Gophers uh, from 04 to 2007. Uh, got a chance to meet Earn a bunch because I had just left. I was playing with the Ravens at the time, but then Eric Decker had came in as well. Uh, I think right around like 07. And so got a chance to meet Earn, you know, and, and talk to those guys. And it was always fun. Uh, like Tyler Johnson, Rashad Bateman, still have a relationship with those guys and Chris Hoffman Bell, because everybody's always like, oh, man, I, I'm trying to catch your record, man. I got I to gotta beat your record. And uh, I know Earn would always tell me like, man, that's the one I really wanted the touchdown record. and I never got it. Uh, but I always appreciate that. And then I remember his brother, when uh, he was coming out of uh, high school, I thought he was going to be a gopher. I, I truly thought he was going to be a gopher, but he wanted to blaze his own trail. I, I do believe, though, if he had been a gopher, I think he would have broke Ernie's record. I think he would have took Ernie down if he had been a gopher. Uh, you look at that offense with the gophers versus the offense with the Badgers, but we'll get into that. I'm a little biased, of course, but I really wish er, uh, Rob, because I remember seeing him play, and I'm like, man. He would have really fit in that the way that offense, especially in that time frame from uh, 13 to 16. Uh, but two brother duos, college football players. I want to thank you guys for joining me, man, on the Ron Johnson show. Uh, first, I'm going to jump out there, Earn. You're the big brother. So being the big brother, 
uh how long did it take before rob was strong enough to kind of like wrestle with you and take you down man he was he was always coming at me as a kid man so it was just one of them things like my brother is one of the most super competitive persons i ever met in my whole entire life and i don't know if it had anything to do with me bullying him as a kid but he hated i'm talking about even to my best friend he they would play basketball one-on-one in the backyard if rob loses he's locking him out the house like locking <laughs> locking him out because he's mad he lost video games i'm talking about like we went at it and mind you we're 10 years apart so it's just like he's 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 trying to come at me and i've never met anybody still today that's like that so when he did get there i think we raced and i was playing in the cfl i never forget we raced i think he may have been a junior or a sophomore in high school mm -hmm. and we raced in the cfl and i was playing in the cfl and i came home and he was he was popping off he was popping off and you know i thought i still had it you know i was on my down <laughs> end and thinking you know i still i still can go so we got out there and man, when he took off, I said, "Oh, it's over." So I pulled the hammy. I had to pull a <laughs> hammy to let him know. To let him know, like I was with him for a minute, but I couldn't hold on, Ron, and it was over. And I and he never he never lived it. Let me live it down, man. He's like still today. He's like I beat you, and I was in high school. So he's been like that since since like I said since I I can remember as a kid. And Rob, yeah, for you, man, like having a big brother playing college football, going on to the pros, you know, continue to play professionally. Um, you know, what, what kind of structure or motivation, I mean, cause I, and we'll talk both about your dad's at one or your same dad, but your dad at, at, at a point, but you know, how was that having a brother, uh, to kind of lead you, lead the way for you? Um, I honestly think it, it was like a dream. Like we, I was playing little league again, we, we 10 years apart. So, you know, I have my games on that, that Saturday or, you know, or that, that, that Saturday. So my, my teammates would watch him play. Yeah. We would stay up watching play i think i still remember his first game when he went out there he might have had he might have uh, top 10 catches um i forget um uh, at minnesota so it was just like that was like a surreal thing like my my friends and me watching my brother play on national tv because at the time we it's not it's not normal to see somebody as close as your brother on tv making plays doing what he loves to do yeah and 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 so for that was that something for you when you realized like man my brother's doing it. My dad did it. This is something I could do. Like, did you see yourself in that moment as you started watching your brother play college football that you're like, I probably can't play in college? Facts. I I I, I would agree. Like, uh, just watching it, just watching them. It looked like me. You know, my my <laughs> last name, our body structure. It's like, that's me. That's me. That's me to be. That's me to be. And again, me being competitive, I'm going to be better than him. So, you know, so... <laughs> So that 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 was my whole uh, take on it. Yeah, man, and, and and Ernie, tell me a little bit, man. Like, so you again, you have the dad. I, I was there. My dad played for the Steelers, uh, two Super Bowls, and so you know, I, I grew up uh, understanding it, but not really appreciating it until I got older. That my dad actually, you know, like watching the Super Bowl, uh, these, you know, like the last couple of years, even I'm like, man, like my daughter now eleven, you know, that's what she said to me in the Super Bowl this time, like. So Papa played in the Super Bowl, and I'm like, yeah, like he played in two of them. He won both of them. He started, you know, he was a first round draft pick. And to watch her like figure that out, like, man, like everybody in the world is watching this one game because there's not 32 teams left. There's two. And so to see it at that level, to see my daughter see it, for her to even, you know, realize, like, man, like that's that's amazing. And I'm like, I, I didn't notice that or I didn't think about it when I was younger because I was. Same thing for my dad. I'm like, man, I want to be better than him. I want to I want to make it to the NFL. I want to go to college and be a bigger college player than he was. And so, Earn, you know, having your dad, uh, you know, what was that like growing up for you? And, and, and kind of how did you use, you know, his lessons for you? Oh, yeah, man, definitely, man. I, I At the time, man, I didn't appreciate it because coming from where I'm from, I was the only person in my neighborhood with a dad. Yeah. <laughs> so. Wow. I was in when when I had to go in, I had to be in the house. Right. All my friends got to stay out. It always <laughs> remind me of like boys in the hood, like <laughs> you know what I'm saying. All my friends get to do all this fun stuff, and I yeah, had you was over there with Lawrence Fishburne. You got yeah, Lawrence Fishburne, yeah. you know, as your dad. Father to be like, nah, you got to be in the you, house. You ain't like Doughboy and Ricky. Nah. Like, <laughs> you, can't, you can't you can't go to the corner store without no money. So right, it was one of them things where like I hated it as a kid because 
I couldn't get away with stuff, man. Right. And I couldn't get away with the little bitty stuff that, you know, some of my friends can get away with where now as an adult, man, I appreciate it so much, man, because it, it saved my life. I tell my dad all the time with, with me and both my brothers, it saved our lives, man, just having him there because he will always say, like, it's nothing you haven't done that I haven't already tried. Right. Any slick thing that you, you know, you you try, you know, you can't get away with because I've seen it already. And with him having a sports background and my grandfather being in the league and playing, and once again, it was one of those things. I'm from a small Columbus, Ohio, where it's like everybody knew who a Will Wright was. So everybody yeah. knew who my grandfather was. Archie Griffin played, and his brothers played with my dad, and they played little league together. So you're running to those type of guys, and you'll hear stories like, yeah, man, you will, right? Okay. Well, you got some skills, and it opened up doors and gave you a certain certain confidence. Like, having a father gives you a certain confidence. Like, I can do anything because yeah. I know my dad do me did it, and he has my back. So having that father gave me that confidence. It was like, oh, yeah, I'm ready for whatever you bring to me because if I'm scared of him, and I ain't scared of nothing <laughs> else. I'm scared of his repercussion over anything else. So – that is just one of those those feelings that you have growing up where it's like, ah, I don't like it. But now that I'm a father and he always said, once you get your kids, you you understand yourself. And I really do. And I tell him every day you was right. It irks me. But I tell you that <laughs> you were right. You were right. And just like like you said, man, having that grandfather who played in the NFL and you can and at the time I, I was he passed away in 2000. But before then, I was just sitting asking questions, man. Like, you know, how was it? Well, nice. you know. What do you experience? And, you know, I miss having those conversations with him now. But me being able to play and, like I said, being 10 years apart from my, my younger brother, I give him those type of conversations. So, you know, it's great having that dad, though. Amazing. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. And and when you talk about conversations, we got I got I got I got to talk about it. Conversations. Robert Wilwright, you were one of the top receivers in high school coming out of Ohio you had your choice of schools and you didn't even want to go where big bro probably was telling you should go. Like what, when, when you look at that, like when you go back to that time and again, and, and I, and then Rachel, uh, uh, Barbo, you know, came on our show and, and she's an awesome, awesome, you know, lady. And when her book comes out, uh, for those listeners that, that heard it before it's coming out in June. Uh, but she's a big, like, she's a part of the PJ Fleck crew as far as like, he has her come out. Mike Loxley at Maryland supports her. Uh, you know, she tells the stories about Jimbo Fisher, mm. uh, 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 Bill Snyder as well from Kansas State. You know, he's a big time speaker about her. David Tyree uh, spoke about her, you know, in, in for her book. David Tyree, you know, loves her as well. And she really teaches athletes um, and men. I mean, men for sure to take off that armor and let their guard down. And so her big thing was, you know what? God's going to put you in the spot you should be in no matter what you choose. And you chose Wisconsin. And right. so take us through that process. Why Wisconsin over Minnesota? Um, At the time, Wisconsin was winning games. Yeah, I'm, true. I'm competitive. I, I, I like winning games uh, on the big stage and, uh, you know, being coming under like Nick Toon. You know, he was a, you know, he had a thousand, you know, I think he might have had two, two or three years of a thousand at Aberdeers. Yep. So I was like, okay, they got that one receiver, got that one receiver, and I'm top recruit. So I'm looking to be that one receiver. Um, unfortunately, you know, we had the best running back <laughs> <laughs> during that time. A few of the, some of the best running backs, James White, Melvin Gordon, yep. Corey Clement, uh, Dare. Uh, we had some, so you had some pretty good running backs during that time, man. You know, coaching changes, uh, quarterback changes. My senior year, we had two quarterbacks. Um, uh, but throughout those times, you know, we was the most winning uh, Wisconsin team in history. Um, so I do say that. Uh, but to be selfish, when I look back on it, I could have easily been in Minnesota. Uh, yeah. You know, like just the structure. My brother played there. They wanted me to be there as, as bad, super bad. Um, and, you know, um, and the thing was, it wasn't even not like falling in his footsteps was something that I've done before with high school. Yep. Um, but I, I don't know. I felt I fell in love with Wisconsin, man. The, the group of friends and stuff that I, I've created and, you know, the experience there uh, was amazing. Uh, but from a fo football aspect, I should have went somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and, and there's one thing I'll say, like my, my cousin, uh, my little nephew, 
Amari Snowden. He's one of the top safeties in, in the country. He was supposed to go to Cincinnati. Luke Fickle then leaves and goes to Wisconsin. So he follows Luke Fickle to Wisconsin. Uh, so I get it. You know, it that that happens. And so it's tough. My other little cousin, uh, he's at Michigan. So, you know, I, I can't win. Both of them, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, safeties and corners. And they, they choose other Big Ten schools. And, you know, again, I look at my cousin. He was one of the top players in the country. He's at Michigan. He plays, you know, every now and then he started as a freshman. But then I don't know, you know, why last year as a sophomore he didn't. And then this year he's back to playing again. Um, but I know at Minnesota, six four safety, you yeah. can't you can't find those. And so, you know, but but again, he's at Michigan, so I know he'll, you know, he has two more years left, so he'll still get his shot. He's one of the again, he's one of the top uh was one of the top safeties. He'll be the top probably this year because all the guys are leaving. Um, but again, no, I, I looked at everything you got you did, and you're right, you guys won at Wisconsin. I look at Ernie's 04 to 07, they never beat the Badgers. I look at your you know, Badgers 13 to 60, you never lost to minnesota so <laughs> that was the one thing that i was so happy with because we we lost in overtime to wisconsin uh we lost uh the last play of the game to wisconsin and then finally my senior year we beat them in minnesota and then i know the next year they lose and then that next year again they finally win again uh and then it was a while after that like it, it, i think i don't know how many years but it took pj fleck a while to get that thing back uh but they finally did get it back they've had it now twice or three times over the last five years so i think that's the key with, with Minnesota now, which this is not about Minnesota or Wisconsin. It's about Ernie Will Wright and his brother, Rob. Uh, I want to make sure you guys remember, too, this show is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. If you want to make every moment more, just go to FanDuel.com backslash locked on for your free offer. $10. They're going to throw some more in there. But remember, $10 parlay can win you 1500 bucks. I told you before, we almost hit in the Super Bowl. We did hit in the NFC, AFC playoffs. Because my guy Travis Kelsey was the first touchdown score and scored two touchdowns. So stay with us with these RJ parlays and, and we'll keep it rolling. A couple more before we get to the daily three. Uh, you know, Ernie, when you look at your time at Minnesota and you know your time going on past past football, when you think about your life after football, uh, what what are some things you've learned in sports that have now helped you in life? Oh man, so much, man. Like, I mean, even having the son today. I mean, I don't want him to follow in my footsteps and play sports. I mean, if that's what if that's what he wants to do, but I feel like playing sports, man, it teaches you how to get knocked down and get back up. Mm -hmm. Right. And then dealing dealing with a team environment. Right now, I'm with the uh with with a company called Cargill, it's based out of Minnesota. Been yep. with them, been with them for about nine, be ten years in June. And just me being around that team environment and learning how to work well with team because you run into a lot of people that, that don't work well with teams, whether you losing, winning, right? You got a lot of people that is about self and it's individual, but playing sports definitely helped me build team camaraderie in any profession that I did outside of football and learn me how to deal with so many different people with so many different backgrounds. I love that about, about about football, man. And it taught me, like I said, just how to be a great teammate. Yeah, Rob, same for you. Like, what, what has football done for you in your life after sports? Um, it, it helped create structure, you know, being up on time, going into work, clocking in, clocking out. Same thing for football, you know, waking up, going to the gym, going to class, going back to the gym, study tables, all that stuff. So I think it just keeps keeps – things on your plate like you you hit with adversity that's what life is about adversity like you said uh, getting knocked down literally getting knocked down getting back up in football but now you know you know real world you know things happen you know family situations friend situation financial situation things happen so you it's just like who you are um will, will come into play you know so, yeah so i think football has helped tremendously um at what life after football and last one before we get to the daily three, that's three questions, three minutes each. We will, uh, I will be leading this one. So this is a special daily three. Normally we have Sam do it. I'm going to lead the daily three with Rob and Ernie. Uh, this is Rob and Ernie will write a uh, former Gophers receiver, former Badgers receiver, they're brothers. Uh, but you know, definitely two guys I've watched, uh, you know, Rob for sure from afar. Cause he was Ernie's brother also because it's Wisconsin. I covered the big 10 for the big 10 network. I also ended up, uh, like, cause I know my first game was Oh nine and that was Decker's like junior year, I think, or senior year. So I didn't get a chance to cover Ernie cause I was still playing at that time. Uh, but definitely would have loved to cover it. And then for Rob, I, I'd already moved on to Fox. 
So I wasn't doing the Big Ten Network stuff anymore, uh, but definitely kept an eye on it because we always talked football and, you know, and I always made the comment like, man, I don't know why this kid didn't go to Minnesota. Like every, <laughs> every chance I got, I made sure to say that. Uh, but, you know, I, I definitely enjoy both of you guys' careers. Um, and one last one too, Ernie, I've talked to a lot of players. I mean, we've had Clinton Portis on here. We've had, you know, Mel Blunt, former Hall, you know, current Hall of Famer, former Pittsburgh Steeler, uh, you know, David Tyree, helmet catch, and Tommy Harris, you know, who he had a, a big life, you know, issue happen and he had to bounce back. And the one thing I always like to ask guys, man, is being away from football, and we've all been there. Some haven't, but if you haven't, you're going to get there at some point. But walking away from football or being just not even asked to walk away, you just football's done. Yeah. You have no choice. You don't get to Tom Brady it and choose and <laughs> run off into the sunset like Tom or like Peyton Manning. Not a uh, <laughs> Yeah, you just you just like, hey, it's, it's over. Like, I don't have any more tryouts. Nope, yeah. it's done. Nobody wants you. <laughs> Figure it out. Um, you get depressed. Like, it's a it's a depressing feeling to try to figure out what do I do next? But what I've learned and watched you, uh, you you still connect with your friends. You still connect with guys you play with. When you look at Lawrence Maroney, uh, you know, and, and all and that group of guys, um, you know, Jamal and all those guys. So for you, wh what's helped you to stay connected to like teammates and not end up in that dark place where it's like, make a make a bad decision or you know separate yourself from your wife because you just don't know how to connect with the world like what's been what's been the thing for you to help you oh man I, i've been there uh man like i remember being released and living down here in atlanta where i stay now and literally just staying in the closet playing video games all day and and just to piggyback off what you said i had those friends luckily that lived here in the Georgia who would come be like, come on, man, come out with me, come hang with me. they will see it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you can't hide it. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things where you can't hide it. You gotta, you gotta find, like, you, like Rob said, you gotta find your way. When times get tough, the real you comes out, mm -hmm. you find your way, man. And like, like you said, man, everybody goes through it. You're going to find it. I didn't want it to end. And for a while, man, I didn't care nothing about football. Like I didn't care about watching it. Didn't yep. want to play it nothing i'm like man like it's like the biggest heartbreak your girlfriend left you <laughs> like it's the worst man yeah and it's like i don't want nothing to do with it like at all but eventually you find that passion again and it got me back into coaching and now i got that adrenaline rushing all over again it's like i'm competing i'm seeing players and i'm seeing players look like me and yeah like, it's like i want to i want to give my all into that because i know what can come from this. So it's like, yeah, man, like you said, man, it, the depression happened and having those close friends like JV, Amir and Jamal and Lawrence and Desi, and all those guys, Steph, man, we all stay in contact. And that's one thing I can say about that group. And I see my little brother and they have that same kind of connection. And I mm -hmm. tell him all the time, man, keep that connection, man. Cause you never know who's going through what call them and, and make sure they are. All right. Just do a wellness check. We always keep with each, keep up with each other and do a wellness check financially, mentally, uh, health-wise, all that, man, just to make sure you're okay. You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't going to tell their business. Right. But sometimes as a close friend, like, we, we're coming up on our 20-year anniversary of, of being friends, and you kind of know who's giving you the runaround. So right. Definitely, man, uh, keep that group of core friends around you because you you when you by yourself and you idle by yourself, it's when them bad thoughts come into your head, man, and you need somebody to – that like you know what I'm saying even with Lawrence him being the first round draft pick we never treated him no different you right. still gonna be Kool-Aid we still gonna laugh at your gap we still gonna talk about you <laughs> we still gonna make fun of you we still gonna call you names like it ain't gonna change and you need the people that'll humble you always yeah no for sure and uh last one receivers I've always done this. Like I did this with Justin Jefferson. We I had Justin Jefferson on and, and we talked about basketball and Justin Jefferson told me he's the best basketball player uh, on the Vikings team. If you, if, for all the listeners out there, please go to Vikings.com and check that interview out with myself, Justin Jefferson and Gabe Henderson. It's hilarious because he made a, a top five that he would play with and he left Adam Thielen out. Like he's like, Thielen cannot make my top five. If I'm hooping, and this is his own team, he just had a big five players from the team. Couldn't even pick his boy in the receiver, in the receiver room. Uh, but talk about hooping, man, because both of y'all are tall. But Rob, if it comes down to hooping, you versus Earn, like who you taking? Of, of me. 
Have you won? Have you won yet? Have I think won? the last time we played, I might have been in high school. Um, I think it was tie game, last point. Has he? Has he? He jumped, touched the ceiling. <laughs> I go by, he fouls me. Got to finish. Got to finish. <laughs> I'm, I'm on tackle. Like one of them. You're never going to score on me. You got I'm going to hurt you before you, you score finish. on me. <laughs> um, I think that was I, I never played him at, since then because I was like, got at it. this point, you're going to hurt me. <laughs> For me to beat you, so yeah, basketball. I think I'm gonna take me. Yeah, no, and and again, like I said, I, I love like that's the one thing, and and this is the the, the great debate. Like every athlete uh, I've had on, every time I sit down with a Vikings player, I love to talk about basketball because that's my first love. Like that's I still give people buckets. Like I'm 42, I still go to the gym, <laughs> and I'm still in there with the step back. I've changed it. I, I'm not trying to play above the rim too much because I'm not gonna lie. Like my wife told me, my daughter even told me, chill out, because I, I I hurt my hamstring on Friday because <laughs> I was doing too much. I was doing too much. There was a, there was a young, uh, there was two kids in the gym. So you, I don't know if you remember Kevin Warren, and we'll we'll bring this up in the daily through about Kevin Warren. Kevin Warren was the Vikings' former COO. He's now the president of the Bears. Okay. And Kevin Warren's son. Uh, Powers is in town back to Minnesota from Michigan State, played at Michigan State, played uh, tight end, and then he played at Mississippi State uh, first, and he transferred to Michigan State. But him and his teammate from Mississippi State are in town. So, you know, I've been playing with them. And so, you know, this dude is like 22. You know, he's 6'5", 240-pound tight end. So, you know I mean? I mean, he's bullying people. He's dunking on people. So, you know, so me and him and his other kid were on the team, and we ran the gym. But, yeah. you know, I'm like, okay, this kid in here, like, shooting threes, dunking on people. I mean, like, literally just bang, bang, off two, dunk. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's just – his natural ability, just super strong. So, you know, I went a little too hard. I'm, I'm in there trying to – James Harden step back. And dude, like, <laughs> steps under me because I got him, like, falling. He, like, steps under me. I kind of step weird. Man, my knee hurt, my hamstring hurt. I'm like, yeah, let me let me get back to just you don't recover like you used to, right? Man, I'm still I got the Theragun over here trying to get my hammy oh, right. My <laughs> so I'm like, I gotta get back to the old man, just shoot my threes, let me cross over a couple times, just shoot a jump. Like, I, I can't do the, the James Hart and dribble, dribble, dribble. You know, I was oh man, yeah, man. dude, I, I hurt him and hurt myself. Like he fell and <laughs> I'm falling on him. I'm like, I'm gonna let I'm gonna leave the I'm gonna leave the dunk into the young kids, but I love talking basketball because it always comes up like Darius Butler was on. And of course, it's a DB. I think DBs can't hoop, but I've seen Darius sent me some video. I've seen he keeps posting it now. He can hoop, but most DBs can't. I give I give him credit. He's a DB receiver. Like he's I agree a, with that. Yeah. He's a DB and a receiver's but like he's a receiver, sorry, playing okay. DB. Because he he's like Stefan Diggs, brother Trayvon. Same thing. Trayvon okay. was a receiver at uh at uh Alabama before he became a DB. So when he talks about hooping, I'm like. Dude, you you wasn't a hooper. Like you wasn't a DB for real. You're a receiver yeah. that just figured out like I can cover people. So let me go make some money. Yeah. But coming up next, we got the daily three. Myself, Rob, and Ernie. We're gonna chop it up. It's gonna be quick, fast pace. That's three questions, three minutes each. Both I'm gonna give both brother about a minute to get their answer in. Uh, and and that's coming up next. But remember, you can download the Amazon Fire and Roku, whatever TV device you have, whether you have an Amazon Fire Roku TV. Just download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app. You can get all of our videos, all of our shows. Just go to your apps, search Locked On Sports Minnesota. You can download all of our TVs, all, or sorry, you can download all of our shows and get all of our videos. Instant podcast after every single Vikings, Twins, Wild, or Wolves game from all of our team hosts. And it is going to be a great season because the Timberwolves did make a trade. We'll see if Mike Conley can get Rudy Gobert going because clearly D'Angelo Russell was a scorer first. So we'll see how he does with the Lakers. Well, fellas, now it's time for the Daily Three. That's three questions, three minutes each. And I'm going to kick it off with the first one. I'll let you go first, Ernie. Um, the question is how – like the, we, we know that the Big Ten is expanding. We know USC and UCLA are coming to the Big Ten to play football. I've had Spice Adams answer this question. I've had Aiken Andale from Purdue talk about this one. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I still got some more. I got Deshaun Foster coming up from UCLA, so I got to get some of my UCLA and UC, uh, USC guys in this. Big 10 conversation, and that's coming up later this offseason. But what is your thoughts on this? Minnesota, Wisconsin, the ability to compete for the conference championship. Now, this is why. We don't know what the expansion is going to look like. But in my opinion, if they're coming from the West, they're going to move into the West, and I think they're going to kick like Illinois or Purdue out, and then they're going to go to the East. And that's my thought. I don't know if that's true or not, 
But I feel like that's the way it's going to go. That's going to be the eight on that side. Those two, because they're closer to those Ohio's and Michigan's, they're going to get kicked out and go over to the east. Does that mess with the chances of, of either those schools, Minnesota, and Wisconsin? And and I know Wisconsin is going to be good with Luke Fickle, but does do you think that hurts their chances now having a team like USC with their NIL ability uh, in the Big Ten West? Uh -huh. And I'll start with you, Earn. Yeah, I, I I believe so, man. With USC, with that whole California West Coast recruiting, yeah, you're not going to get uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota is not going to get those type of guys. I mean, you can very few, but that majority will stay in that UC USC and UCLA area, and that, I mean they they pretty much had that locked down. And I just feel like, I mean, it could be lopsided, but you know. It's a toss up, Ron. Like, like I said, man, I, I, I love it for the for the conference and all mm -hmm. down in SEC country and the, the way they talk, man. I, I we need to put the Big Ten back on the map. <laughs> but but I definitely believe, man, it, it's going to bring a competitive edge to that West Side where we need and, and let Ohio State and Michigan stop running the East as well, too, though. Yeah, what you think, Will uh, Rob? Uh, I like that. I, I think I think USC they, they got to play us though. They got to right. play. You know, it's Big Ten football. I beat USC with them top recruits. We beat them. Um, so they got to come over and play. And, of course, you know, the NIL is, is changing it up, the transfer, the, the transfer uh, portal. Um, I think it just is – college football is different right now. Yeah. Right? And so uh, I'm excited, but I'm also kind of standing our ground. Like, this is Big Ten football. Y'all got to come and play each and every week against a Purdue, against a Illinois, against a Minnesota. Like, they're going to come and play each and every week. Yeah, and I, and I will say this. I hate to say this out loud, but Wisconsin's Braylon Oliver, I got to – or uh, Braylon Allen, sorry. I got to watch this kid the last couple of years up close and personal. He is a monster of a man. And Luke Fickle, what he did at Cincinnati, he didn't have the bodies at Cincinnati that he's going to get at Wisconsin. When you talk about the offensive line and you talk about that running game, and then he's going to add some probably some high-quality receivers that he had. And like, you look at guys like Sauce Gardner who went to Cincinnati. Uh, you look at Kobe Bryant who went to Cincinnati. Those are two starting NFL. So, shout out to Sauce Gardner out of Detroit, Michigan, my high school. Uh, wore the same number I wore in my high school, so that's my guy. Um, but he's going to get those guys. Like Luke Fickle was a great recruiter. I'm so annoyed that he went to Wisconsin, but I know he's going to do great things because of how he recruited at Cincinnati. He's going to be able to do that bigger and better now at Wisconsin because Cincinnati wasn't truly a football school and they were in the college football playoff not too long ago. You go to a football school now with a school that has basketball, they have money. There's nothing on campus but football. You got to jump around like Luke Fickle's about to go crazy. And so, yeah, I, I agree with that. I think UCLA and USC facing some of these running teams in the West every week and week out, facing the Ohio States, facing the Michigans. They're going to get exposed if they're really for real because they beat up the Pac-10 and that's or Pac-12, whatever it is. That's not that's not hard to do. But let and me so, so Ron, what about what about the travel though, man? You know yeah, and that's gonna that's gonna hurt them. But that's but same hurt. thing though, we I mean, got to travel to them. They there. only have to they they only have to make eight trips. So <laughs> or no, uh, seven, six yeah, or seven. seven trips. Yeah, yeah, six or seven because you get twelve to thirteen games now, depending on how they do this new schedule. But you look at those twelve games; they're going to travel six, and then we're going to have to come and and honestly, like I think they're debating on how this first three is going to be because it used to be yeah. you know three fluffers, and then you play eight Big Ten games, and so technically that's four travel games because you're going to try to get as many home games as you want in that first three because the Gophers I think had three last year. Um, but USC is going to strategically try to figure out and UCLA to get three home games against three easy teams. And then they'll have four trips across the globe. And then those, you know, Penn State, because Spice Adams hates it because he said yeah. Penn State has to travel to USC and UCLA. And that's a long trip from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. So I, I think that's going to be the key. Um, next one up, more expansion talk. We look at the college football playoff. It's been four, 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 four. And there's always this crybaby. Ah, we are undefeated. Why are we in it? Or where we lost one, they lost one. How are they beat us? Or they lost two, we lost one. Why are they in ahead of us? Well, now, of course, you talk, they listen. They're looking at going to eight, maybe even 12 at some point, but eight's coming. With this expansion, do you think that ha that helps teams create a chance to have upsets now? Because right now with that four, there hasn't really been upsets. But now with eight, do you think it's going to be upsets or do you think the top two, three are, are still going to dominate like they've been doing the last six years? Oh, it's definitely going to be upset. It's going to be a lot of upsets. I mean, okay. I, I like the expansion, man. I think it's been needed and people needed to, to to set that up a long time ago. 
I thought four was should have been a, a good a good I say beginning, but then after that, after that, like definitely expansion eight. We'll we'll have a we'll have a really good good see of who's supposed to be at the top and who's not. Yeah, what do you think, Rob? No, I agree too. You know, the more teams, the you know, the more chances you have to uh, have upsets. I think maybe the first year, though, I think them teams that be winning when we win it. <laughs> you know, they've been winning. That I think they're gonna continue to do so. Um, but you know, as time comes, I think you know we'll have more upsets. You know, get an opportunity to the teams who usually don't get in can get in and you know and showcase their talents. Yeah, I, I do think so. I think eventually, like I, I agree with that. I think Georgia's gonna dominate. Georgia, Alabama uh michigan right now looks like an ohio state are going to dominate the next couple of years but i do think you're going to have an opportunity and i don't know if like one's going to get upset by eight but i i can't i can see like some of these like sevens beating the two or sixes beating the three uh because that that's him but whoever's one i just don't see georgia losing you know to whoever happens to be eight and if it's 12 because i know they're talking about 12 for those that want to know because i know pj fleck bought this up 2019 when the gophers beat Penn State, they would have been in the college football playoff if it had, if it had been 12 because they finished 12. So, uh, and, and again, we know Wisconsin's always in that top 10 up into the point where, you know, they, they either run into a buzzsaw with Iowa or Minnesota. And that's that's going to be the three teams in the West that cannibalize each other every year. Like Minnesota, Wisconsin, Iowa, it comes down to those three. Um, and that's, you know, it is what it is. Purdue snuck in there, but I think with Jeff Brom leaving, we're not going to have that as much. Last one before we get out of here, fellas. Um, if you could become the Big Ten commissioner, so you're taking over for Big Ten football, and uh, you can change anything. You can change how the schedules run. You can change, um, you know, how the playoff for the Big Ten is run. Because right now it's East and West. There's no additional op opportunities to win the Big Ten championship. What changes would you make? I'll just let you start with this one, Rob. Woo, that's a good question. Uh, what changes would I make? Uh, I would. I would probably change the the schedule uh, just as far as in us playing uh, more of the you know the opposite side division. Yep. Um, you know, like I never got to play against Penn State. Um, I think uh, us adding more games if we are are able to play the uh, you know that opposite division. Uh, I would I, I think I would have liked that a little bit more traveling a little bit more. Uh, so I think that's probably what I would change. Ernie, what about you? Uh, I mean, I have to take a memory of how basketball used to have the uh, Big Ten ACC challenge yep, yep. and SEC challenge. I definitely make sure that football would do that. You know, oh, yeah. let's stop shying away from the SEC and Alabama's. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. let's get that challenge going. Who's who's the top dog? Like who's the top conference? And I definitely want to set that off as far as showing that you know Big Ten is Big Ten, and you know we can compete with everybody. First week, last week. Playoffs, we like you know, like I said, I think the Ohio State and um, Georgia game was the championship game. Yeah, and 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 that's the type of stuff that I would like to see week one and week two instead of uh, right. playing. You playing? Uh, I don't want to throw no colleges out there, <laughs> but you know what I mean. I don't want to play no Rudy Pooh, uh, Kroger All Stars or anything <laughs> like that. So definitely, man, I do the Big Ten SEC Challenge or ACC Challenge. Yeah, no, and I and I agree with both of you. I've said that about the ACC, SEC basketball, Big Ten, ACC. I've said that. I was like, that would be cool to have like Minnesota play North Carolina, you know, and even like the Big Ten, Big Twelve challenge. You yeah. know, like Minnesota goes and plays Texas, and then Texas Tech plays Wisconsin, and mm -hmm. then you know you go, you know, whoever Ohio State versus, you know, I think TCU was the best in the Big Twelve, so Ohio State goes and plays TCU to kind of start the season off. And also, I agree with Ern or Rob. I, I think. Instead of playing some of these early teams, and nothing against some of these teams, because we've lost to them, uh, yeah. but we've also beaten them, like Illinois State and Arkansas State and some of these other ones. They were great stat builders. Like, they they would help, you know, get you ready. But at the same time, I do agree with that, too, playing the East, because I wish I could have played Michigan more. I wish I could have played, um, you know, Penn State more, Indiana more. And I think that's something they're going to – I know they're looking into that, because you look at these 12 games, you got 16 teams in the Big Ten. It's like, we might as well just play each other. Like, why Why go play other conferences and give them money? We can make this money for ourselves. Our TV rights, look at the Big 12 contract. I know the Big 10 and Fox is excited about getting USC and UCLA uh, into this because now they can have some night games on the West Coast and get a 10 p which sucks, but they can get a 10 p.m. East Coast game because it's going to be 7 p.m. in the West. Yeah. And so, you know, I know, I know they're looking forward to that, but 
I, you know, the travel and all that stuff. But no, I, I definitely agree with both of you on those. I want to thank Rob and Ernie for joining me today. That's Rob Wilwright, Ernie Wilwright, two brothers, Wisconsin, Minnesota, great receivers, college football receivers, uh, you know, two great young men, followed their career. Definitely glad we got them on the show. And remember, stick around. We're going to have a lot more in the coming weeks as we break down this NBA finals. What's going to happen with the playoffs? Will the Timberwolves make it? Are they back in the playoff game, play in game? We're also going to, we have to follow the wild. The hockey season is, is upon us. The wild are right on the cusp. They were in the playoffs last year. I got a chance to go to my first hockey game for the playoffs. It was nuts. And so I'm looking forward to seeing where the wild go with that. I want to thank you guys for joining us today and have a great one. Appreciate you. Thank you.